love for you. We care deeply for you, so we're here to proclaim the truth. And the only way we can know truth, the only way we can have an objective standard of what is morally right and wrong, is through Christ. It's through the Word of God. It's through God's law. So we're here today to, to beg and plead with you to turn from this wickedness, turn from this sin. God calls this an abomination. So we're here today to point you towards what is just and holy and righteous. It's not us. We're not here to give you our opinion. We're here to proclaim Christ and Him alone. We're here to be obedient servants to God and do what we've been commissioned to do, and that is to go forth and preach the gospel. That's to preach the gospel to everyone, to teach them the commandments of Christ. The commandments of God, the one that we serve. See, we don't stand before you claiming that we're more righteous or holy than you are. We don't claim that we're better than you. We stand before you knowing our condition before a perfectly holy and just God. We know that there's nothing we can do. When we come to God, when we die one day and stand before God, there's nothing we can offer Him. There's nothing we can do to add to God and who He is. We come to God with our pockets turned out with nothing to give to Him. But the hope that is in Jesus is that grace is poured out on sinners, on people that don't deserve it. What we rightfully deserve as rebels against God is death. What we rightfully deserve is eternal punishment in hell. That's what we all deserve, me included. Not one of us can stand before God and offer our good deeds or good works as a way to justify ourselves. Just like if you were to go in front of a judge and you were guilty of a crime, you couldn't tell the judge all these good things you've done in order to justify yourself for the law you've broken. And we've all broken the law of God. We've all lied, we've stolen, we've blasphemed, we've defiled the marital bed, we've committed adultery. Christ says this, he says, if you even hate somebody in your heart, you've already committed murder. He says, if you lust after somebody in your heart, you've already committed adultery. So we're here today to point you towards the only hope you have, the only peace that you'll have in your life, the only reconciliation you can have for that day when you die and stand before God. Now we can sit here, we can give you Bible verse after Bible verse, we can preach truth and facts to you all day, but the only truth that is going to change you is Christ. It's Him alone that will change you. It's God that will remove your heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh, like it declares in Ezekiel chapter 36. That it's God that changes us, it's God that chooses us and transforms us into the image of Christ. So I urge you today to beg God to change your heart, to change your mind. See, repentance isn't just words out of your mouth. Re repentance means a change of mind. You no longer think the way you used to when you were dead in your sins. When you were a lover of sin, when you were a lover of pleasing your flesh, in rebellion against God, shaking your fist at your Creator, you no longer think that way. Now, you love what God loves and hate what God hates. And yes, God does hate. He lists things in His Word that He hates. One of them is sexual immorality. He hates it. He hates the hands that shed the blood of the innocent. There are things that God hates and He has to hate it. Being a loving God, He has to hate what opposes His character. See, the law of God is not just arbitrary rules. The law of God is a reflection of His character. And it's how we ought to live. When God created us, we were made in His image to be upright, but we rebelled against Him. We shook our fist at God. We chose to sin. We chose to defy our Creator, but we weren't made to be wicked. We were made to be upright. Sir, I see you flipping me off there, and I can tell you this. Christ says in Matthew, from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You have evidence to me and to all these people here how hateful your heart is. What happened to acceptance? I thought this community was all about acceptance. But you're there flipping me off and cursing at me. You've evidenced to all of us here your desperate need for Christ. You've evidenced all of us how hard your heart is. Your heart is so hard and filled with anger and hatred that you, you let profane words come out of your mouth at your brothers and sisters. We're here because we care for you. We love you deeply. 
If you saw somebody walking towards a cliff, you wouldn't just let them walk off the cliff. You would point them in the other direction. You would call out to them. You would warn them. We're here to warn you that this path you're on is a path of destruction. It's a path leading you straight to hell. Now you guys can laugh and mock. You can turn around and you can walk away and reject everything I've told you today. You can reject God. You can reject His gospel. I'll tell you this, the people we're here for are the ones that hear the message and come to Christ. We're here for the ones that their hearts are softened and changed. Uh, there's a fence between us, but but I'll tell you this, brother. I, I do care for you. I love you, man. I deeply love you. Uh, I'm not going to hug you through the fence, brother. Um, hug it out. Hug it out. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So, so we're all going to die one day, right? Keep See, you're haters of the gospel, you're haters of truth, so you want to tune it out. You don't want to hear it. You hate God, you hate His law, and so you want to tune it out and silence it. What happened to inclusion? What happened to inclusion? What happened to being accepting of everybody? What happened to that? I thought you your community. See, right there, another middle finger. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. You can't love God because you're in rebellion against Him. You don't obey His law. How could you love Him? God says, those that love me, keep my commandments. See right there, that obscene gesture shows that you do not know Christ. You do not love God because you are a rebel against Him. See, we can't claim that we know God. We can't claim that God loves us and will forgive us when we live in, in rebellion against Him, when we practice lawlessness and live unrepentant in sin. Christ says this, he says, many will come to me on that day, and he's talking about on the day of judgment, and will say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do all these things in your name? And he'll say, depart from me, I never knew you, those who practice lawlessness. You can't practice lawlessness, you can't live in sin and claim you know God. You can't claim that God loves you and will forgive you when you are in rebellion against him, when you are haters of his law. When you are in rejection of what he's commanded you to do, God commands you not to defile the marital bed. He commands you not to commit adultery. He calls what is happening here today an abomination. This is why Sodom and Gomorrah were wiped out. It was for this very thing, for homosexuality, for taking what God has made and defiling it. God has made it for one man and one woman to come together and be one flesh. That is what God's intention is. That is what God's creation is all about. But you don't want God. You don't want His law. So this is what we do. This is what all of us do as sinners. Is we elevate ourselves to the level of God. We reject God and His law. And we decide what's right and wrong. We make ourselves arbiter. We make ourselves judge over morality. See, and Christ says... Brother, it's no surprise to me. God says that there will be mockers and scoffers. See, when you hear the gospel, it triggers you to mock and laugh because you hate God. You hate His law. And when you hear the proclamation of the good news of Jesus, when you hear the proclamation of Christ, you laugh and mock. You're in rejection. You're in rebellion of God. Well, why don't you come over here and you can hear me better? Brothers and sisters, there's only one hope for us. That hope is in Christ alone. It is faith alone. In Christ alone, we are saved by grace. It's not about works. It's not about what we can do to earn salvation. It's about what Christ did for us. See, Christ came, became the perfect sacrifice for our sins. Yeah, we can. It's ASU. It's public property. It's public property. Okay. Okay. That's okay. Fine. I'm an ASU student too, so I mean, just go. That's why it's open campus. I can be here, sir. With respect to you, I respect I'm just your gonna position. Let you, I'm going to let them deal with it because yeah, it's their campus. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Thank hey, you. Appreciate just, it. Do me a favor. Can you hang tight until I get them over? Well, well I'm going to keep going. He's going to keep actually, going. Yeah, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to ask you to hold on until. Uh, if, he, if they can say you you're quote good, to me what law or ordinance I'm breaking? I'm just making sure you're not breaking the law. Okay, well, yeah, well you can't tell me to cease and desist again. something if so, you can't clearly articulate can, uh, to me the law. Are you guys allowed to have just keep a, preaching. Is it open campus for people on that side where we have... I'm just going to go back on this side. Because I have... Uh,
Brothers and sisters, this is what happens when the proclamation of the gospel goes forth, is people want to silence it, because you don't want to address your sin, you don't want to address that you are living a lifestyle that is, that is in rebellion against God and leading you to hell. So I'm here today to warn you and to plead with you guys to turn from this. The only hope we have is in Christ. We have to put our faith in Him and trust in Him. Hey, you can say whatever you want, sir. I still love you. I still care about you. And I'm still going to stand here in hopes that God will soften your heart, that God will change your mind. I love you, brother. I love you, brother. I tell you what, guys. My heart breaks for you right now. I know that I am no different than you. The only difference between us is Christ. That Christ has come in and changed my heart. I have a new heart and a new spirit now. The whole world dwells inside me and has changed me. It's changed the very nature of who I am. I used to be a rebel against God. I used to be a drug addict. I used to be a fornicator. I didn't change on my own volition. One day I didn't just decide to stop doing those things I loved. <laughs> new desires and this is what God says in his word that he makes us a new creation the old passes away it says we have to die to this world be buried with Christ in that is what you need that is what all of you need is to be raised again with Christ to shed these things of the world see it says in the book of John in chapter 15 that if the world hates you know that it hated me before it hated you but God has chosen us out of the world, so the world hates us. So those that sit there and mock and curse, know this, that you aren't hateful. You know, you're not hateful towards me, you're hateful towards God and the proclamation of the gospel. It's God that you hate, it's His law that you hate. And that's what causes your hearts to be so filled with anger and hatred. It's because if you were to honor God and be obedient to God, you would have to reject this lifestyle that you live in. You would have to turn from the sin. You would have to put your faith in Christ. You would have to turn from the way that you live your life. See, the truth is being shut out because you guys have closed off your ears and closed your eyes to the truth. You don't want God. You don't want His law. So you want to shut it out. But just because you turn away from it, just because you put your hands over your ears, it doesn't stop the impending destruction that's awaiting you. I promise you this, if your house was on fire, pretend you don't hear the siren, but it's not going to stop the destruction that's coming upon your home. Just like you can tune out your conscience, you can pretend that you don't hear the, the word of God, that you don't hear your Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit talking to you. You can try and shut it out and tune it out, but it won't change the truth. The truth is this, is that without Christ, you are dead in your sins. There's no hope for you. There's no hope for you apart from Jesus. You need to hear the truth. You need to hear the gospel. You need Christ, because apart from Christ, there is no hope for you. There is no peace for you. Brothers and sisters, I stand here because I care about you. I love you deeply. I love you enough to tell you the truth, even amongst all this opposition, even amongst all this hatred. I'm here because I deeply care for you. If I didn't love you, if I didn't love you, I would walk away and wish you all to hell and not even waste my time here. If I love you, I would tell you the truth, sir. It is unloving of me to not tell you the truth, to not point you away from sin, to not point you towards Christ, towards your only hope and salvation, and reconciliation with God. It would be unloving of me not to share that with my brothers and sisters. As my brothers and sisters, I must proclaim the gospel. I must love my neighbor, and you all are my neighbors. If I don't tell you the truth, it is unloving. It's because I care for you and love you that I stand here today to go against what society says, to go against what this culture says. I'm willing for, for everyone to come at me in opposition, to curse at me, flip me off. I will still stand here boldly on the foundation of the gospel. That is the only standard I can have. I'm not here to preach my opinion to you. I'm not here to preach my feelings to you. I'm here to tell you about Christ. I'm here to tell you about what God has already declared in His Word. 
And God says that if you love Him, you will be obedient to Him. You will obey what He's commanded you. He commands you not to defile the marital bed. He calls this an abomination. He commands us for a man not to lay with another man. To do this is to practice lawlessness, is to rebel against your Creator. You know the God I'm speaking of because you live your life in the Christian worldview. You live your life like you matter. You live your life like you have value, and you do have value. But see, my worldview as a Christian is the only thing that can justify your value. See, the reason you have value, the reason that I can justify why you're worthy of love, dignity, and respect is because you're made in the image of God. All of you are made in the image of God, worthy of love, dignity, and respect. So it is unloving of me not to point you towards Christ, not to point you towards repentance. Now, I can't change you. I have no ability whatsoever to save you, but I know the person who does. Christ is the only one who can save you. He's the only one that can help you. He's the only one that can bring you from being dead in your sins and bring you to life. You need to be brought to life. You need to be born again. I'm ready to go. Is there another section I can go to? No, I just keep preaching through the holes, man. They can hear you. Those banners don't stop the sound. Brothers and sisters, these, these signs you hang up are not going to block out the sound. They're not going to block out the truth. You all stand there, and you still are listening, and that's for a reason. You're listening right now because God is working on some of your hearts. Now, I'm not here for the people that are going to turn around and walk away and reject God. I'm here for that one person out there that hears the gospel and comes to Christ. That's who I'm here for today. And since I don't know who that person is, I am going to proclaim the gospel to all of you. I can't look inside your heart. I can't see what's inside your heart. Christ can. God can see inside your heart. God is the one that works on your heart, that changes your heart. I urge you, I implore you, get in the word of God. Hit your knees and beg God to forgive you. Beg him to change your heart, change your mind, to love the things that he loves and hate the things that he hates. What's up, brother? Hi. Can I tell you something? Absolutely, sir. What's up? You know what? 20 years ago, mm -hmm. you're saying, ask Jesus into my heart. And I did. And you know what? I came out. Because before, I would have fucking came and whooped your ass in a fucking heartbeat just because you got in my face. And because you got in my space, I would have fucking beat the shit out of you in a fucking heartbeat. You could rob five of your friends and I still would have beat the shit out of you. But you know what? Jesus showed me the way because you know what? I'm happy with myself. And I'm not in that fucking space anymore. I'm not in that space. So you space. claim that you know Jesus and that he's your savior. You know what? I sure do. So let me ask you this. I sure do. So, so in the book of Matthew, Christ says, those that practice lawlessness, I will say, depart from me, I never knew you. He says that those that live in sin will die in their sin. So you can, whoever told you you can just say a prayer and that punches your ticket to heaven, that person lied to you. No, that person lied to you that said you could just say a prayer. See, you know what? It's not a matter of it's not a matter of being a Baptist, Catholic, or whatever. In my heart, you know what? I know I'm right. I know I'm okay. God made me your own standards. God made me this way. God did no. God God made us upright, and sin has corrupted our nature. Sin, sin is what. God, you know what? God did not make you hateful. Something, brother. I love you. Something made you hateful. To sit here and say that I did something fucking wrong and I'm going to hell. We all have. We all deserve hell. Even I do. The only thing that's going to you know justify what? us I is did. Christ. I did. I told you what. Sir, you're I, living I just in told sin. you. I, how? Why? You, I, you said you I'm came out somebody, as a homosexual. Didn't Jesus say, be with the one you love and love people? Yeah, and, and but he, where does he say be homosexual? He doesn't say that. He where actually does, condemns where does that. Jesus say he don't. says a man should not lie where? with another man. Jesus never said that. Absolutely. He, he calls out where? all sexual immorality. Where? Where? where does Jesus ever say that? He calls it an abomination. It's an abomination. Jesus never said that in the Bible. Anywhere in that Bible, Jesus never said, man, was, so, you're going off the base of other shit that man put in a book. So, so Christ Jesus condemns all of, said, nowhere, all of sexual nowhere immorality. Nowhere did Jesus ever say, man is not supposed to lie with man. So Christ continually in the New Testament quotes from the Old Testament and uses law from the Old Testament to apply in the New Testament. So therefore, when it's already established in Levitical law, it's already established in the Old Testament, Christ never goes against so what's already declared in the Word. Either, right? Well, the, in the New Testament, it says that those things are done away with. 
Oh, so right. now, now we can pick and choose. No, throughout it's, the what, years it's what the Apostles and what, what Christ said run do. away with. You know what? Stop. Sir, I, I mean, I don't so you're evidencing fuck. right now you don't know Christ. You're here cursing. You're you're knowingly practicing homosexuality. You do not know Christ. You, know you are you are not homosexuality in years because I've been celibate for fucking many years. And just because I'm cursing, don't mean shit. From the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Okay, and I'm saying that you're evidencing your heart. You guys are being hateful. I love you're you. I care about you. How am I being hateful? You're being hateful. Just have I cursed at you? Even coming have I cursed at you? Much. Have I cursed at you? No, you haven't. No. But you've cursed at me, have you not? Have you cursed at me? So who's, who's being hateful, sir? You are, because you're coming here preaching your hate. For no reason. Right, see, so you call the word of God hate. See, you don't know him. I told you the way that I was before. I told you yeah. the way I was before, but Jesus says no. But what, where, where, where are you evidencing that your heart has changed? You're here right now. You know what? You're here right now, cursing at me, saying that you've changed from this hateful person. Just because I'm cursing, don't mean shit. If I was still hateful, I would have, like I said years ago, I would beat the shit out of me. I, I would hop over this fence and beat the shit of all three of you. See, and that's proof that time. all of us, all of us are, are depraved but and Jesus dead says, no, don't do that. Don't do that. Just be a loving person. He also person. says, don't practice homosexuality. No, he didn't. It's declared in his no, word. Paul says in the New Testament, not. all scripture Jesus is God breathed. All scripture said. is God breathed. See, then you're bringing in the so you're saying that, that the you're, you're saying that Christ that contradicts what's in the Old Testament. That Jesus never said, "Don't practice homosexuality." Jesus never said that. And he it, says and, not and, to defile and, and, the marital if, bed. If that is what you're reading, then you're wrong. You need. You need Sir, do you have a Bible? Do you read your Bible? Yes, I have a Bible. I went, I've i been in church since I was a fucking child. I've been in church. And I stopped going because of the hatred that you guys preach. Sir, I don't hate you. I love you. I care enough to tell you the truth that if you keep down this path, if you keep living in sin, you're on your path to hell, sir. I care enough to tell you the I'm truth. Not, I'm not going to I'm not I care enough to, to warn you. Cr I'm not God says that you if you practice what? lawlessness, he'll say, depart from me. I'm not going you. to hell. I know I'm not going to hell. I know. By whose standard? By God's standard, you're on your way to hell. By your standard, you're not. Sir, if you don't use God's standard as your objective standard, then you it have no standard. It doesn't matter what you say. My God is not a hateful God. My God is not your God doesn't me exist. The way I am. You created your own God. You fabricated your own version of Christ so that you can live how you feel is right. For you. So then you're saying your God. I believe in the God of Scripture, the God of the Bible. So then what you're saying is your God is different than the God I believe. In. Yes. Based on Absolutely. based on your confession of who you think God is. Your your confession of God contradict blatantly contradicts what God has declared in his word. Yeah. All I can say is you're, you're preaching hatred. I'm preaching love for you, brother. I want you to stand before God. I want you to stand before him righteous. I love you, brother. I love I want you I want you to stand before God. I could accept you for who you are, no matter what your beliefs are, but if you're going to come and spill a hatred and be So if I was a rapist, if I was a rapist, would you accept me for who I am? No, I wouldn't. Why? Because that's something against the humanity. Against humanity? By whose standards? In some cultures, in the Amazon, it's okay to rape. It's culturally accepted. Okay, so, you so know, standard? you want to go that way, I'm not raping you. I'm not having sex with you. So well, why would you, you accept? Me? Would you accept? You know would you what? accept me though, Father Ray? I've never did. I've never been in your bed. No. Would you so, condone so what, what I'm doing? What does it matter? If you saw me rape somebody right on the street right here, man. Sir, answer my question. If you saw me raping somebody right here on the street, would you do something? Would you yes, stop I would. me? Why? Why? Yeah. Because it's wrong. Right. What if I said that's hateful for you to interrupt me and interfere with my lifestyle? Because when if, if I if I am with a man and I'm in their bedroom or in my bedroom or in our bedroom and that we've lived together. So I'm not going in what? your bedroom. I'm here right now. You've made a confession to me that you've come out, that you're homosexual. And I'm telling you with love, not hatred for you. Just like if you saw someone being raped. If you saw someone being raped, you would lovingly try to interfere and stop them. And you would tell them the truth that rape is wrong. You shouldn't do it. I'm here to lovingly tell you that that's, homosexuality is wrong. God condemns it, and I want you to stand before God one day. The day you die, I want you to be seen so as righteous. you're telling me that if I put the man and I love that man, yeah. he loves me and we just have to be in our bedroom. That is what we do. Mm -hmm. That is completely wrong. Yes, that is wrong because God has declared it to you. Even though Jesus told you to love the people Love, I do love you. I love you enough to tell you the truth. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna sit here and condone sin. You say you love me because you want me to follow what you believe. It's not. 
it's what God says and declares. Y'all are preaching. Y'all are preaching here. That's what if I loved a, a, an eight-year-old you know boy? Is that okay? Would you, you condone that? No, I wouldn't. Why not? Because an eight-year-old is not old what if he's enough cool to then? realize. He accepts it and he's, an eight-year-old what if he gives me? What if he gives me consent? An eight-year-old is not old enough to realize that you know what? I shouldn't be with this man who's thirty years older than me. See, so you're condemning all these other things that are sexually immoral, but your sexual immorality, you want me to accept. You're saying my sexual immorality is not doing anything to you. It doesn't matter if, it's, if, if I'm with a little boy or raping someone, that's doing nothing to you. No, it's not. But is it right because that person isn't consenting or is not able to function the reality of consenting? So consent so, all of a sudden makes sexual immorality not immoral anymore? You're saying Im immoral, so why, why It's are... immoral because God declares it in his word. That's how I can have a standard to tell you it's morally wrong. Because God has already declared in his word that it is wrong for a man to lay with another man, that it is an abomination. God has declared it so I know it to be true. That's the standard I go by. I don't go by my own standard. I go by my own opinion or feelings. You keep saying Jesus said it. Jesus never said it. God and Jesus are one. They're one God in being you know and what? nature. You know what? Become spiritual. Spiritual. Not, become spiritual. Not really Why on earth would I do that? You want me to reject Christ? Yeah, I'm not saying reject Christ. Become what does spiritual, spiritual mean? What does spiritual mean? Mm -hmm. That you know in your heart is right. And what so somebody, I'm the standard. And, and what somebody else is telling you that is wrong, you can decide whether or not that is wrong or right. Because so I'm the, I'm the arbiter of what's right and wrong. I think so, yes. Right. So I, from, from what you're preaching, do you think I'm perfect? Me, you're telling me. Do you think I'm perfect? No, I don't. Are you perfect? No, I'm not. No. So how can we be the arbiter and the standard of what's morally right and wrong when we're imperfect beings? But you're trying to tell me that I'm that I'm, I'm not using my opinion though. I'm using the word of God, which is an objective you're standard. You're reading a book that a man wrote based on what they want to do. I'm reading a book you know inspired by He's God spiritual. that He's lots spiritual. of men wrote. I love you, brother. I love you to warn you, tell you the truth. Repent from this sin, turn to Christ, and live. 